Greetings and salutations. It's a tradition on this channel that we take a look at the new Linux Mint when it's released. Linux Mint 20 Ulyana, based on Ubuntu 2004 LTS Focal Fossa, was released just a couple of days ago. And I've been fooling around with it for the last two days. I installed it yesterday morning on hardware and it ran okay with just a few glitches. Then today I was going to install it in a virtual machine and record the experience so I could do a video showing you guys the install process and showing you the operating system and a look around the desktop and all that stuff like we ordinarily do. I can't make it work. It would not run at all in GNOME boxes and I was able to get it to load in VirtualBox but the video was terribly glitchy. I got it installed and then I installed the drivers for VirtualBox and that helped somewhat but not enough. So after several takes I did finally get a video that I considered to be complete and I went back and watched it before uploading it and I said this is horrible I am not going to put this on YouTube. So this is less of a look at Linux Mint 20 as it is a chat about Linux Mint 20. I could put it back on hardware but at this point in time I have neither the time nor the inclination to do so. Let's go ahead and just talk about it. Uh, this is the Linux Mint that is based on the latest Ubuntu LTS. Do not confuse this with LMDE which is the Linux Mint Debian edition. Now, I looked at that when that was released a while back, LMDE4. That's pretty awesome. They have uh, three desktops available. You can get the Mate desktop, the Cinnamon desktop, or the XFCE desktop. I have been playing around with Cinnamon, so I might have had different luck if I had chosen XFCE or the Mate desktop. Let's go in and take a look at some of the... Uh, stuff that they're talking about here. So I'm clicking on the one for Cinnamon and it takes me to the Linux Mint blog post where they announce the release of Ulyana Cinnamon here. And the first thing I want to talk about are these ridiculous system requirements. They say that this should run on one gigabyte. I wouldn't even try. They say two gigabytes is recommended for a comfortable usage well, that wouldn't work much better, I don't think. Really, honestly, you need at least 4 gigabytes of memory to make this work well, especially if you actually plan to do anything with the computer. And then they're talking about 15 gigabytes of disk space, 20 gigabytes is recommended. That would be just enough for the operating system and not enough to store much in the way of files. But if you're doing virtual machines, I guess that's okay. 1024 by 768 is the lowest recommended resolution and you can press the alt key and drag the windows around to get to the buttons that you can't see. That works about half the time. I have to be honest with you. So I really would not recommend putting this on low-end hardware. I would maybe with the Mate desktop, but I don't know. I haven't tried it. You need to have a pretty beefy computer to do this. At least four gigabytes of RAM and a multi-core processor. They're talking about upgrade instructions here. Well at this point they're not available. What you need to do is watch the Linux Mint blog and they will tell you when they have them. Unlike Linux Mint 19.2 upgrading to 19.3, this is a big fat hairy upgrade and it should be approached with some trepidation because you're actually switching the base you're going to be going from Ubuntu Bionic Beaver 18.04 to Ubuntu 20.04 Focal Fossa. Uh, they do have very good instructions. I've done this in the past and it works. But if you want to do it, you're going to have to do it from 19.3 to Linux Mint 20. You can't be like on, uh, you can't go from here to like Linux Mint 20.03. So if you're watching this video that far down the road, you know. So it's kind of a right now sort of thing. Really, honestly, what I would do if you wanted to move up to the new version of Linux Mint for whatever reason is I would recommend that you uh, 
go ahead and back up all your personal data and reload the machine. Or if you have a separate home directory, then you can just reload the operating system and leave that home directory alone and then just mount it as the uh, new home directory, home partition rather, on your hard drive. So you'd have a root partition and you'd have a root directory. That's the way that I would do that in this case. But you can try the upgrade if you want to, or you can stay with Linux Mint 19.3 because guess what? You got three more years of support on that. And you don't have to go anywhere near this until you're good and ready. So let's look at what's new. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to talk about the whole Ubuntu snap, no snap in Linux Mint thing a little later in the video. So the star of the new Linux Mint 20 is an application called Warpinator, which is actually a reincarnation of an older application called Giver. And what Giver let you do was share files between Linux computers. And it used to be shipped with Linux Mint quite some time back, and they have brought it back in this new sh form here. I thought this was pretty cool. Clint Westwood, Denzel Chicago, Natalie Portwoman. <laughs> awesome. The idea here is to give you a really easy point-and-click way of sharing files between computers running Linux Mint. Most folks who are advanced Linux users do this today with SSH or NT... Uh, what's the other one now? Well, there's, there's SSH and then there's SSHFS and I almost said NTP, but that's the time protocol. What is the other one? I'm blanking out on that. You guys know what that is. It's just a, it's a protocol to share directories over a network on Linux. And uh, I'm sure now 400 people will put it in the comments. But anyway, it's, it's just a different way of doing it. I use SSH. Most of the people that I talk to use SSH to do that. But to set up SSH, it's scary because you have to go into the intimidating terminal and type in a command or two. So I can see how having the Warpinator ready to go would be easier for new users who like to point and click. And Linux Mint has always been geared toward new users. But if you look at it from another point of view, this is just more feature creep in Linux Mint and um, also uh, could be considered bloat. It's up to you. Uh, so we have uh, NVIDIA Optimus support here. This is improved. Uh, new things happening in the tray. Cinnamon 4.6 desktop. So then we have the X app improvements. We're going to celluloid now away from whatever that X viewer was that they had for uh, videos because celluloid is nothing more than a front end for MPV. So the only two actual audio video programs that are installed now are celluloid with MPV in the background and rhythm box. No VLC, nothing else. You get um, Thunderbird for your browser, you get Thunderbird Mail, you get hex chat and transmission for internet tools, and then you get the full LibreOffice suite. Let's go and look and see if there's any more other under other improvements that we need to talk about system improvements you know you guys can check this out for yourself if you want to let's go back up to the top of the page here so uh like i said i was able to get it running on hardware it was okay on hardware it doesn't work at all in any virtual environment i've tried it 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 worked enough that i was going to publish a video that i took with VirtualBox, but it's i went back and looked at it and said this is not worth it i'm just not going to do it so one of the big things that's happening with Linux Mint 20 is the fact that the Linux Mint folks have taken exception to the fact that Ubuntu now ships the Chromium browser in a snap. So if you're on Ubuntu and you go to a terminal and you type in sudo apt install Chromium browser, what it's going to do is it's going to switch you over to a snap package. And if you do not have SnapD and SnapCore installed, it'll set that up for you automatically and the thing about that is Linux Mint considers this to be somewhat sneaky they're thinking that Canonical is going back on their promise that snaps would never replace apt and they think it's kinda of pulling a fast one on the users 
So their solution to this is that when you open up the software manager in Linux Mint and you try and install Chromium, you can't. What it does is it gives you a message about this and then tells you that you need to go to the Chromium web page and download something to install it. So they're absolutely stonewalling the installation of Chromium. Well, my opinion is, is that if they felt so strongly about it, why don't they package Chromium themselves, put it in a dev package, and put it in the Linux Mint repositories? It's not that hard to do, actually. You see, the reason why Ubuntu has switched Chromium over to a Snap install is because at certain points during the release cycles of Ubuntu, they would have to maintain four different versions of Chromium and get it to run on all of the supported versions of Ubuntu at the same time. The Snap installation requires them to maintain one package, put all the dependencies in the Snap and make it available that way. So from that point of view it makes perfect sense because it's a less duplication of work. However, not having an apt package available and switching everybody over to Snap is something that does give me a little pause. However, Linux Mint stonewalling the installation of Chromium and also making it difficult to install SnapD because they don't like it seems to be rather reactionary as far as I'm concerned and it's a step too far. If you don't want to use Snaps, that's fine. The user can install Snaps if they want to. If you'd like to make Chromium available, then go ahead and put that in a dev package and put it in your own repositories so that when they go to the software manager they'll be able to find it. That's my opinion on it. In other words, two wrongs don't make a right. You don't like what Ubuntu does, so now you block users from being able to get an application that a lot of people use easily to make a point. So. Uh, other than that, when I was running it on hardware, I had no major issues. But I also didn't really see anything in Linux Mint these days that makes me go, oh, this is so much better than Ubuntu. I personally have been running Ubuntu for a long time. I skipped Linux Mint 19 entirely, and I'm going to skip Linux Mint 20. I've been running Ubuntu on all of my computers, plus the people that I help, people in my family who are Linux users as well have been switched over to one form of Ubuntu or another. And these days, when I run into people who would like to start out with Linux, I usually recommend that they start out with something like Ubuntu Mate, which is a lot easier to use in some ways than Linux Mint. Ubuntu also does a better job of handling updates these days. Uh, with Ubuntu, it's usually not necessary, nor are you goaded into choosing local repositories. Uh, like in Linux Mint. One of the things I don't like happening in Linux Mint right now is that uh, system reports applet that comes up that's kind of frivolous if you ask me and a lot of the recommendations that it makes I don't agree with. Like in 19 it was recommending that people set root passwords. I disagree with that. It goes with the Ubuntu security plan, the way Ubuntu works to do that, and it opens up a lot of worms in a can. A lot of, opens up a can of worms, let's put it that way. A lot of worms in a can. Oh my goodness. So if it's Linux Mint Debian, I understand that because Debian sets a root password, but if it's Linux Mint based on Ubuntu, they really need to be following the Ubuntu guidelines. So I have to just tell you guys, I'm not particularly impressed with Linux Mint 20. I see really no huge major improvements in it. My recommendation to Linux Mint these days is drop Ubuntu and actually start basing yourself on Debian full time. If you don't like what Canonical is doing, now's the time to do it. Of course, they've just committed themselves to five years of support with uh, Linux Mint 20. And I think for a lot of users, it'll be just fine if you're not a Chromium user, if you don't know what a Snap package is, you don't mind using the flat packs, uh, then you're fine with it. But if you are somebody who's hip to what's going on, uh, this might not be the distribution for you. So that is my look at Linux Mint 20. Thank you for watching. 
Your feedback is always welcome, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a lot of feedback on this here video. So I'm looking forward to your comments. Also, uh, check out EasyLinux.com for more about Linux. Join the discussion at EasyTalk. That is our very own forum. It is free, secure, and lots of fun. And be sure to give Easy Linux a like on Facebook if you are a Facebook user. We have quite the thriving community going on over there. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.